Hey everyone, bit of a trigger warning in this episode. We do discuss suicide as it is a major plot point in the film. Hopefully that doesn't turn you away from the episode, but if you do choose to listen, uh, I hope you enjoy. Thanks so much. Welcome back to Cocktails and Classics. I'm Dylan. Joining me this week is Ben, Zach, and Cam. And this week we did Dead Poet Society, a 1989 comedy, dra- dramedy, basically. Directed by Peter Weir. And to kick things off and get everybody in the right mood, we're going to go to this week's cocktail, the Coke and Captain. We were- do not know. What did you just say? What did you just Coke call it? Coke and Captain? You say the Coke Captain and, and Captain. Coke. What type of fucking what, elitist same, do you think you are? The there, is no, there is no faster way to get carded at the bar than to order a Coke and Captain. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, yeah, I'm gonna sir. need to Can see I some have ID. An adult Bud Light, please. <laughs> no. I need to see some ID. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> just the order of the way you you list them, but uh, whatever. Yeah, but no one does it the way you did no it. No one says Coke and Captain. <laughs> no one. What do you mean the order you list them? It's not even <laughs> alphabetical. What are you talking about? I feel like the alcohol always goes first in these things, you know, like rum and coke, uh, Captain and coke. vodka cranberry, Jack and Coke, Jack and Coke. Yes, Coke and Jack. Oh my god! Cold glass table and Coke. <laughs> uh, Strippers ass. Okay, and coke. well we're doing a Captain and Coke then. Uh, yes, we are. Great high, That's guaranteed right. pink eye. You guys wanted, we, we said we were going to give you simple cocktails. So what's simpler? Coke and um, Captain simpler. Inspired by, in the movie, Robin Williams says, you may call me, oh, Captain, my Captain. And the boys in the Dead Poets Society begin to call him Captain throughout the movie and stand on their desks and kind of salute him at the end of the movie. I don't even know if there's a recipe. I'd assume it's probably like two ounces of Captain Morgan. And, uh top your glass with coke i i don't this is a i don't think there's a recipe for this put in captain morgan put in coke captain and coke look you guys don't need us to spell this out for you all right if it if you take a sip and it tastes too strong take like two more sips and pour more coke in because let me tell you by the time or yeah or just finish it and try again because i guarantee the second time you're not going to care that it tastes like rum i was thinking the other day I was like, I don't, I don't order old fashions at a bar because I was talking about, I was talking to Hannah about how I'd never had a gin and tonic. And I was like, it just feels like one of those drinks you don't order at a bar because it's so easy that you kind of want the bartender to give you a little, like a little pizzazz. Like that's what they're there for, you know? So it's like, I'm not yeah. going to order an old fashioned because it's like the simplest thing to make. <sighs> yeah. But I think I, but See, I feel like for, a lot of people order rum and coke or like For me Captain though, coke. I think an old fashioned is actually a good drink to order cuz in my opinion that's a benchmark. Like if if you can give me a good old fashioned, I trust you to give me like anything there, you know, like yeah, all of it. I think cuz it it's a it's a short list of ingredients, but getting the proportions right is so crucial to that drink. Otherwise, it's just like either super harsh or super like i don't know syrupy sweet i don't know i feel like there's a good bl- mix blend yeah yeah but i like i just feel like it's like a like if i'm feeling lazy that's what i'm making sure kind of thing you know uh but it's like it is like a solid like it's one you should you should master or like have a good one of yeah. if you're a bar oh for sure yeah like i said i use that i use a that as like a benchmark for like if a bar's worth trying the other drinks at, you know, there. Or paying for good ones, you know. Rather than just getting, like, a rum and coke, like you said. I was gonna, oh, I, I I mean, for rum and cokes, though, I, the only, in my opinion, you that's the type of drink you get at a bar when it's the opposite. And you're like, I don't really think anything I, you, I have you make for me is going to be that good. So I'll give you something you can't fuck up. I cannot trust you. Yeah, like it's if I'm literally going to tower. I might be getting a rum and coke. It's two ingredients, and they're both in the name, so this should not be hard. Yeah, no, that's a good, that's a good uh, 
It's gonna, I don't know if I trust drinking here, but I'm not drinking beer, so... I'm still scarred from the last time I had uh, spiced rum and Coke. So, uh, you know, I, it's... Um, <laughs> I'm a was that triggered. airplane? No, no, this was oh. uh, Gasparilla. Uh, oh, okay. The like, pirate festival in Tampa. Oh, my, okay. My wise idea, because it was like, oh, we're going to be out here all day hanging out. So my wise idea was, I'll get a two liter of Coke, pour about half of it out, pour this entire bottle of Sailor Jerry's <laughs> into Sailor this two Jerry. liter of Coke, and then just drink from it all day. It I will. S- well. Yeah, I will say I. So I didn't have any captains, so I used Sailor Jerry's, uh, which is very similar, uh, of course, but. To show how infrequent I drink rum, this bottle of Sailor Jerry's is, I think, older than my relationship with my now wife. What I think I, I think I have previous wife. No, not not older than that one. Uh, but uh, I think I got it's, this it's aged, bottle. You know, it's getting better. I got this bottle a long time ago, and I'm pretty sure it's older. It's been on top of the fridge in uh, about five college apartments. Uh, I only had one college apartment at that, you know, <laughs> like after I moved out of the dorms. Uh, but yeah, it's been through. Yep, it's been through that college apartment, and then just I've just carried it around for some reason for years. It's almost gone though. Everybody's like got a baggage. Shot left. Cam's is a bottle of Sailor Jerry. You're carrying it around because you can't bring yourself to throw it away. It's alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> even even if it's low tier alcohol, you're just like I can't throw it away. Yeah. I'll pawn it off onto someone. Right. It feels like a waste, right? Like, I don't want to throw out alcohol. Like, yeah. recently I got some of those smooge things, which <laughs> I think are disgusting. Um, but I didn't want to throw them away because it's like it's a waste of alcohol, right? Well, apparently they go bad. Uh, but I was oh. relieved oh. that they had alcohol expired. No so then I could bad. throw them away with Im- <laughs> without any guilt. <laughs> I could just toss them in the drain. Without feeling guilty because they were expired, I try to. I've tried to shots. pawn them off, and people are like, "Nah." You gotta do shots, guys. Let's do. Let's do shots, shots of, of Sailor Jerry's. Mm. Oh, oh Sailor Jerry's is fine. I was referring to the smooch. No, you couldn't pawn those off. That's what I'm saying. Told people I, what I, they I, were. It's like eh, well, I'm I try on that. I yeah. Just nope. Like put out like like guys, we're gonna hang out, and then it's like you put out your Sailor Jerry's, your your Burnett's. Your El Toro, oh, no. and, oh. and just uh, get rid of all the bottom shelf crap you have at your house. Make yourself a uh, Captain and Coke. Hit up the Drizzly and Casker links. Get yourself some spiced rum, whether that's uh, Captain Morgan or, or Sailor Jerry's. Check out Dead Poet Society. It's available on Amazon Prime as of recording. And uh, we're going to spoil it. Dead Poet Society is a 1989 dramedy film. Uh, directed by Peter Weir, written by Tom Schulman, stars Robin Williams, Ethan Hawke, Robert Sean Leonard, Josh Charles, Dylan Kuzman, um, Kurt Smithwood is in there. Kurt Wood Smith, sorry. I'm just giving him a crazy name. Red Foreman. Uh, <laughs> uh, is there anyone else really, like, big? I don't think so. I feel like, there, I feel like there's a lot of people in this movie that look familiar, but... So Art. this came this came up as I was watching it on Prime, and I'm sorry if it spoils any sort of trivia or whatever. Laura Flynn Boyle was in the supposedly supposed to be in the movie, and she found out the like on the day of the premiere that she was completely edited out. Oh my god! Whoops. <laughs> Who like, is this just, person? Um, she plays Donna in, in Twin Peaks. Yes. She's uh um, she's one of the Danbury like the mother of Chet Danbury, I think. Like the girl, like Chris, who uh, the one guy is like obsessed with, the girl that he meets at that house. It's I yeah. think the mother. Oh. Of, like the family that she's dating the dude. Gotcha. All right, tell us more X ray. Amazon IMDB X ray stuff, Ben. Hit me with that was it. Facts. That was that was the one like oh, oh. apparently um Something about the movie was supposed to be, uh, instead of Robin Williams, it was supposed to star, oh, who the hell was it? 
the um, history teacher from Zach, Animal House. <laughs> no, not the history teacher from Animal House. No, no, no. This guy was the history um, teacher from Animal House. Mm. What was... Uh, God, I can't remember the guy's name. The Liam guy Mason. from The Graduate, Dustin Hoffman, was supposed oh. to be... I mean, I could see that. I was suppose. supposed to be Keating. I thought it was Liam Neeson. And Liam Neeson, too. Liam Neeson landed the role with a different director. Oh, interesting. I read somewhere that the part of John Keating was once intended for Dustin Hoffman, and it was supposed to be Hoffman's directorial debut. Oh. What happened? They went with... They originally went with a another director who cast Liam Neeson and then Peter Weir came on board and cast Robin Williams. Weird. So like Dustin Hoffman was supposed to like star and direct in it. Yep. Yeah. Hmm. Dead Poets Society is the story of a maverick teacher, John Keating, who uses poetry to embolden his boarding school students to new heights of self-expression. It's currently sits at uh, number 212 on IMDb's top 250 as an 8.1 out of 10, and it won one Oscar, nominated for four. Uh, it was one Best Writing screenplay written directly for the screen. It was nominated for Best Picture, Actor in a Leading Role, and Director. Had anyone seen this before? Yeah. I have not. Yes. No, sir. It's it kind of in the sense of uh, what we did last week, like Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. It felt familiar because I feel like there's definitely like a whole like subgenre that is like teacher who tries to shake up things and like has a way a crazy wacky way of teaching people to express themselves. Uh, I feel like that's a whole like a subgenre. So this kind of reminded me of things I've seen before, but I definitely had never seen this before. See, I think this movie for me, this movie always I don't know why it always reminds me of School Ties. I don't know if anyone's ever seen that movie. Um, Matt mm-hmm. Damon. Um, Matt Damon. Matt, Matt Damon. Damon's in it. Chris O'Donnell's in it. Um, God, I'm, I'm blanking on people's names today, guys. It's this is not good. Brendan uh, Fraser. Fraser. Yep. Yeah. Um, it's kind of very similar. It's like a prep school type movie. Uh, it's very good. Um, yeah, this movie always reminds me of that. Only there's no like. There's not the the teacher that's there to give them the the courage to do new things and be a different person, um, but they do feel very similar. <laughs> school, t- school Ben's like it reminds me of this movie. School ties the story. The story is that the guy is a star quarterback, but he has to re- conceal the fact that he's Jewish. <laughs> Like totally okay. Completely don't read the synopsis. <laughs> don't read the fucking synopsis. Watch the fucking movie and then tell me they don't feel similar. It's about two story groups. Of story the- Cam. Story it's- by Dick Wolf. Bum, bum. Oh, Dick Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> so here's here's the dun, thing. Dun, dun, they both dun, take place. Dun, dun. They both kind of follow two groups of students in like what feels like 1950s prep schools. The feel of the movie is very similar in that regard. Okay. Yes, they do both the exact take place content of the movie isn't the exact fucking same. It's not the same fucking movie, Dylan. I said it reminds me of. It. I thought I thought don't this was stand and read. deliver. Don't but... sit there. Don't sit there and read the fucking two sentence IMDb thing and be like, "Oh, this movie's nothing alike." Oh, fuck out of here! I'm not having this. I'm not having your shenanigans today. You got fucking. Told, you sure this Dylan. isn't lean on that? me? <laughs> the movie with yeah, that uh, Morgan Freeman where Morgan Freeman plays like the principal to try to get all the kids into into school. Yeah. I think the big difference with this movie though is that the fact that like he's almost doing the opposite where he's not trying to get the kids invested into school. Like the kids are already invested. Yeah. Like it's like their their destiny is set for them at such a young age and he's trying to be like you could do whatever you want. Like you could go. Wait, wait. Did you say stand by me earlier? No. no. Lean on me. Stand and deliver. Oh. 
lean Stand on. Stand as deliver is the, yeah, I see. Okay, all right. I was confused. I, for some reason, I thought you said Stand By Me. I was like, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Cameron only yeah, selectively they they heard the two movie the titles cave. you said. He heard the Stand part, and he heard the Me part, and he just kind of filled in the rest. I will say I enjoyed the film for the most part. It was kind of... Um, I mean, it's also from the 80s, so it, I feel like it, it kind of felt like a lot of things had done similar concepts before. Oh, let's go make a secret society, and we're going to go do this thing. And, and uh, like, one of the guys is trying to, like, he's he's trying to do something that his father doesn't want him to do, but he's afraid to, like, stand up to his dad. And, and then I, I, it's where I thought the movie was going right at the end. And I was kind of surprised they did when he goes into the dad's office and pulls out the gun. And I was like, oh, they're, they're really about to do it. Like, I just, I was just, <laughs> I was just assuming, <laughs> but wow. Okay. Get yeah, the suicide this... scene, like Galadriel about to figure out how to fucking defeat Sauron. And then the next thing you know, there's a smoking gun on the other side of the desk. <laughs> yeah. That's the one thing I, I always remember about this. Like, literally, after you see this movie for the first time, and that was kind of what I was excited to to kind of talk about with you guys, was, like, it seems like such a, like, happy, upbeat movie, and, like, yeah, this kid has problems with his dad, but he's gonna talk to him, and he's gonna show him his passion, and then the next thing you know is when he kills himself, and it's like, oh, this movie just got dark, and there's only, like, 25 minutes left. <laughs> like, what the hell are we It was, like, to... the last 15 minutes. I was like, what the hell is was happening? It? Yeah, I mean it was. It's just it was like pretty late. Yeah, no, it's it's in the last like quarter, at least of the movie. Yeah, where it kind of makes all of a sudden turn, where it's like, oh, I thought this was like coming of this coming of age tale about this, you know, this group of students, and it's like, oh wait, the ones. Okay, well, hold on, the entire parameter of this movie just shifted. It's so, like yeah, where you guys that ginger guy, you know, because oh. he just like was total total narc on the board yeah fuck cameron yeah oh wait you know, sorry uh <laughs> we don't claim richard him. cameron <laughs> his la- his last name is cameron which kind of helps but we us camerons don't claim that one uh yeah he pissed me off he pissed me off real bad when he did that and he's like yeah they don't we're victims here it's all keating's fault he's gonna go down for it you guys just have to tell them the same thing you fucking I told him the truth that Keating put us up to it. No, he didn't. All he he literally told you about it and then said I wouldn't do that. Right. And then you guys decided to fucking do it. Besides, it's not even any of their faults. It's fucking their. It's all of the parents who like one of the like most frustrating tropes, and I feel like eighties, nineties movies is just like the um. Not even uncaring parent, but the very stubborn, like, you're going to do what I exactly want you to do. You're going to be a doctor. It's prevalent. Yeah, it's prevalent in so many movies and is the cause of tension for a lot of shit. And every single parent of all of these kids who got in trouble and, um, and Neil's dad, who was like, no, I'm going to take you and put you in military school for you to be a doctor... And his, like, spineless mother, who is just sitting there, like, crying, but not, like, standing up for her son. Like, what the fuck? Look at yourselves. Uh, It was was the 50s, Cam. It was the 50s. Women were to be seen, not heard. Okay. I'm not... Whatever. Her son killed herself, all right? So, I don't... It doesn't matter. She should have stuck up for him. It's just so... It's just so frustrating to see, I don't know, that trope play out. Like, I'm not, like... It's it's obviously, like, very accurate. Like, I feel feel like a lot of parents can be like that of like you know i want you to be who i want you or i want you to be yeah who i want you to be not who you want to be and i don't know or they like put their ambitions exactly on you exactly he because throughout he's like oh you have more opportunity than i ever had blah 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 and then i've done so much to get you here to this point it's like the only people in this movie to blame for his suicide are his parents Honestly, playing quarterback for West Canaan might have been the highlight of your life, but I don't <laughs> want your life. <laughs> Anytime you guys want to do varsity blues, I'm up. Oh my god! So like at the last like 20 minutes of the movie, I'm just like yelling at these parents, like all of them, not even just Neil's parents, but like even like any of the kids that got brought in for like getting in trouble or whatever. 
It's like, can any of you like have a spine and like stick up for your kid? God damn. Yeah. Like what like, is I happening kind of ex- here? I, I, I kind of like bought for a minute that I was like, oh, he did talk to his dad and his dad was like, yeah, gonna allow him to do it. Cause when he showed up, I was like, huh? Okay. But then like, he has that moment where he kind of like stares at his dad and I was like, oh, he didn't tell him. Oh, now his dad wants to talk to him. So maybe his dad's going to be like, wow, son, you were really good in that play. Like, maybe you should like continue acting. Yeah. And then he's like yanking him out of the place. I'm like, oh, fuck. It's, uh, it's only That's not worse. good. <laughs> it's going to get bad. It and keeps getting kid, worse until it can't get any worse. Jesus crown. Well, it's a puck crown. Yep. It's from Midsummer's Night Dream. But yeah, when, he, when it showed like the night scene and him like getting out of bed or whatever, I was like, oh, my God, he's going to kill himself. God damn it. Why you do this? Yeah, because up to that point, like, the movie is, like, kind of lighthearted. Like, there's, like... Yeah. There's just the one scene where uh, home, Homeboy's a little creepy with Chris when she's passed out on the couch. Um, oh, I like, man. Hey, I was, like, cringing that whole time. You know, honestly, cringing, I was yes. I was on the, <laughs> I was on the side of the of the jock who beat him up. I was like, you did... You deserved that. You deserved you to get the shit kicked out of you, dude. Don't... Don't just... Do anything near or around unconscious people. It's fine Don't because this movie has the very, then... this movie has the very important lesson that if you are persistent enough, no matter what <laughs> women tell you, if you are persistent enough, they will like you. So just keep trying. You know <laughs> that was the message back then, though. You know, I know. Well, that's what I'm saying. Is it's so yeah. It's such a gross It's weird message. to watch it 40 years later, but it's like, that's the way it was, you know? I mean, there's a lot of movies that are like that in the 80s, 90s, pro- even in the early 2000s. I feel like you don't get that as much nowadays because it's kind of frowned upon. But yeah, that trope is gross of like, basically, you can annoy somebody into liking you. Effectively. That's what I did. At, and I'm glad best. I got in when I could because you oh can't do that shit anymore. <laughs> uh... Cause like she legit, out. <laughs> she legit tells him no. He makes moves on her while she's unconscious. Well, yeah, unconscious, drunk, whatever. Um, all while she's like in a relationship with somebody. Like he's well, at the guy's the, house. But the like, moves are the moves happen before the no. But that does not make it okay. But right. just well, to there's correct some the moves timeline, that happen. Just, well, just to I mean, correct yes, the timeline. but I mean, sh- sure. But the, he, he also he, he also does moves while not saying she's it's the best, not saying it's the it's right. Don't get me wrong. I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh, it's OK, <laughs> because it's not OK. But he was also a blitter, like literally drunk off of his ass. True. Right. As like a 14 but he was year not old passed who's out. probably never had alcohol. But he was. Yeah, he was. But not I don't think out. they were 17. Was, well, whatever. She was I at least asleep, really. which does not make it okay. <laughs> don't no. touch unconscious people. <laughs> people with their eyes closed, don't go near them. People with their eyes open, don't go near them. Just even t- after he does that, and even after she says, "Don't like stop," uh, like he still persists. Don't. And then she agrees to go control. out on a date hey, with him, basically. Don't. Uh, Just. Go to your little fucking poetry meeting and don't be creepy. Also, right? N- Nuwanda, I what is it, what is his actual that name? That was bad. That um, was bad. Charles Charles. Charles. When Charles he brings those whole girls thing about it's being so Native American awkward. like yeah. stuff like the name and the face paint and the the calls. That was rough. that was bad. God called he wants women at Wilton. <laughs> All right, that you gotta admit okay, that's that a baller funny. move, though. Okay, that was who funny. did this? Bling bling. Yeah. Hello? Oh, it's, it's for God. you. It's God. He says he wants women at Welton. <laughs> um, but yeah, when he brings those girls to the thing, it's so awkward. Like, yeah, yeah. Hey, but come then... to my cave and join my poetry club. <laughs> like, oh man, Sounds you, got, like you brought City. girls to guys night. What are you doing, bro? Come on. <laughs> Read the, the room. Of this? It's just supposed to be a bunch of dudes reading poetry to one another. Yeah, yeah. I gotta say though, those girls either had bad intentions or needed to show better judgment. They come to my cave with my <laughs> six friends. We're gonna read you poetry. Just doesn't sound well, like a plausible scenario. It does not sound. Let's plausible. not act like the ladies are the most innocent because they're also the ones plying these teenage boys with alcohol. Yeah, they were trying to get after those little gummy worms. Discs <laughs> with a C. Oh, wow. <laughs> 
<laughs> but it like it's so awkward when uh charles is like reading them poetry and stuff and just like all the dudes are sitting there like uh, i think right. that no i think the look was because he's like literally like let me make up a poem about you on the spot and then i th- feel yeah. like the poem he recites is like pretty common yeah like he did not make it up it's somebody else's poem yeah oh yeah that's why they're looking at him like for fuck's sake like really this fucking kid this fucking guy oh it's okay let me make up a poem about you oh my god Ugh. it's like the dude that plays wonderwall in the quad in college and like, <laughs> oh i know anyway. an, i know an, i know a good one let's do wonderwall. anyway here's wonderwall <laughs> oh speaking of guys who play instruments how much do you want to bet that kid who's the fucking bab bagpipe kid his mom was just like i told you i told you if you learned to play the bagpipes good things would happen oh my god because <laughs> no kid wants to play the fucking bagpipes i also which kid was the bagpipe kid He's not credited with anything. Like, he's literally just oh. the bagpipe Oh, he wasn't kid. the saxophone kid? No, no, he played clarinet. No, no, I well, don't know. Really... both. Well, no, no what like... I'm saying is he played, he started with clarinet, but saxophone is cooler. So he played no, that. I'm saying I thought he was literally... also the bagpipe kid. Nope, there's no. literally, his title in the movie is literally Bagpiper. It is his one acting credit. Which oh. shoots you know, down Ben's my like, theory. No one wants to play that... the bagpipe, but after watching this, I was kind of like, I should get a bagpipe and learn it. I was like, I'd annoy the shit out of all my neighbors, but... Fighting the masculine urge to get a bagpipe. <laughs> no, but, like, you just gotta think, like, that one mom who's just like, I told you learning the bagpipe would, would pay off. I kind of wish, too, that, like, I wanted to look at that, that kid's IMDb credit and see, like, he just plays the bagpipes in a bunch of movies. <laughs> like, every movie needs Could one imagine, bagpiper? Like, yeah. <laughs> Well, like every cop movie bagpiper. well every cop movie needs someone to play the fucking you know they need someone to play the bagpipes at all the boston so they can play like taps or whatever cop movies like in the departed yeah exactly exactly like the departed did anybody else um grow up wanting to play the saxophone hoping that it would turn out the way it did in this movie where you play it and you're you in front of all your friends in a made. cave and then you don't get any action because that's why i started playing saxophone too yeah, what about the sax man? Yeah, I just thought it was the coolest instrument, which I was correct, but, you know. I, th- I think it's, well, besides drums, I think it is definitely the coolest instrument. I think it's definitely, I think it's definitely, like, top three. Yeah, like, no one's been, like... In the band. No one's been, like, wow, can you play your oboe for me? That'd be really sweet. Actually, I saw that in a movie once. Was it an oboe? I thought it was a clarinet or a flute. No, it was a flute. It was an oboe in band camp, though. Uh, but no, I mean, I think, I think sax one's definitely up there. I think drums are, not, oh, it depends on the type of percussion. If it's like, if you're playing a the drum cymbals, set, if you're playing cymbals, you ain't cool, bro. I mean, I was thinking more like, I don't know, the timpani, you know, like the big drum. Uh, you like, think, eh. tim- you think timpanists get ass? I don't know. Steel, uh, steel drummers though. Oh yeah. They get ass, especially on Jamaican vacations with people's <laughs> wives. Oh my God. Um, do, 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 then, do, do, I don't know do, do, the next do, do, do. one. I mean, it might be there. Might maybe put a trumpet or trombone in there. Maybe I yeah. guess trumpet. Show some love to those trombone kids. kids. Not the trombone though. Hey, fuck I think you. that you one. To, I played the trombone. <laughs> if you're looking to maximize the amount of ass you get, I think you should start with drums. And you don't need to learn saxophone until you're like twenty. Was start band like that a requirement in Michigan? No. Okay. No, but it's an I, extracurricular. I, I, find, I find it odd that three out of four of this group all played an instrument, though. Well, in my school, all of the smarter kids did music of some kind, which was either band, uh, orchestra, or choir. I'm also going mean, to say choir, I but... didn't go to school in Michigan, so that's true. That's too. Fucking, true. Fucking check yourself, buddy. No, I was in all band right. until freshman year, and then I switched to choir. Did you learn anything in Ohio, though? I feel like it's just like. A breeding ground for you're from fucking (laughs) Alab, but (laughs) your state's the thing your state's most famous for learning is how to impregnate your relatives. So I don't want to hear it. (laughs) Bad at not being able to read, you fucking idiot. (laughs) Hey, we may be 49th. We are not last in education. (laughs) Thank Thank God God for for Mississippi. Yeah, the only time anyone's ever said those words. Roll tide. (laughs) Were you guys kind of shocked that like? I don't know. To me, Keating seemed like the perfect 
like teacher I'd want to have in college, but I feel like in terms, school, of, in terms of high school, and it's obviously different, you know, because we grew up in the era of standardized tests. I'd be so terrified the entire time being like, we're going to take a fucking standardized test on this shit, and I'm going to know absolutely nothing about what I'm supposed to be learning. Yeah. He'd be a good college teacher, but I, I do think that high school, and I'm not saying that it should be like this, but I, I agree. I think that the you would definitely fail your standardized tests and not get into a good college with the, with him as a teacher. You're never going to make it to Harvard. I don't think it's a good indictment of our education system, but... Yeah, don't learn to think for yourself. Learn how to repeat facts that we give you. Right. As a kid, you know, you don't read anything. I I feel like even in college, I wouldn't have wanted him as a professor. Like, he would have been a fun professor, but, like, I didn't read shit in college. No. When I was paying for it, it needed an A. Anything that was ever assigned to me, I never read. So I just just feel like... uh, Because you you could I I mean, I I did take, like... uh, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I, I, i'll let you know it hurts to laugh but that was worth it got him <laughs> tying it back now you have to include it <laughs> or else there's just a random insult about dylan not being able to read <laughs> everybody's gonna wonder why dylan can't read I'll be like it's every also episode. Dylan. Yeah, I was going by Trundle at the time. <laughs> no, you weren't. <laughs> no, you just didn't know how to spell Charlie. <laughs> anyway, Dylan, you took a class. You took a class in what? He couldn't. He didn't read anything, which I uh, I do agree. I didn't read a ton. I read. I, I think I probably read about half of what I should have read in college. Like. It also wasn't, like, my major or anything, so I wasn't yeah. super interested. I was really mostly interested in just getting the A and leaving that class. And so, yeah, I, I did basically what I had to do in those, at least in those classes, what I had to do to do that. Yeah, I did 80% of my reading in one class freshman year. My intro to philosophy class, I read, like, six books and wrote six papers. And uh, that's what you get in a math degree, so advertising that to the kids. You don't have to read. <laughs> well. That's I, true. I mean, that's the other. That's what you get in a math or computer took, science degree. Is you don't have to write a ton of papers, which is awesome. I took intro. To, I took intro to science fiction literature. Mm-hmm. Um, and fun, I studied. Actually. I studied animation, so you didn't even have to read anything fucking lame. <laughs> that's true. I mean, you can definitely pick which materials you can read, and and, and yeah. not that I didn't read anything, but there were definitely times where I was like. Uh, I got a lot of math homework. I don't have time to read all this. Hell, I it's mean, not gonna happen. we were even we were assigned to read Frankenstein just to like g- go to like the honors just for no re- like, yeah for no good no. reason. <laughs> well, Spoken I had also yes. I had also read Thank you that. For, congratulations school, on so. being an honor student. Now here's your homework for summer. Fuck off! I just graduated from that. I'm not doing that now, bro. You need me more than I need you. Let's be honest. <laughs> Straight up. You need the numbers more than I need your shitty book report. <laughs> Maybe if I would have been the presidential scholar, I would have put in a little more effort, but like Yeah, so that was the thing. When you roomed with three presidential scholars and you were just a fucking idiot in the group of four <laughs> and they all read the book and wanted to chit chat about it at lunch, and I was like, Can we fucking not do this? <laughs> let me let me say, it took me a while and a little bit of effort to get into this movie. Because I feel like the first 30 minutes is just, like, the Goonies for the one percenters. Yeah, I can see that. It's like all these preppy, snobby kids that I hated growing up that I'm supposed to now want to give a chance in this fucking world. And I just didn't want to. Yeah. You're supposed to feel kind of bad for them, I think. It's like, you're going to, like, an elite preparatory school. It's really hard for me to feel bad for you. Yeah, but I also think they do a decent, like, especially, I think, like, in terms, especially with, like, Todd. Yeah. Is you're supposed to kind of feel bad because he has to live up to what his brother was. So you kind of get the feeling that, like, oh, especially when you meet him and he doesn't talk much and he's super shy. It's just like, oh, his brother's 100% like the star of the family. And Todd's just kind of like the other one. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Like, I think that can be relatable. 
I mean, that's true. Or there's another part where he gets a he gets the uh, he gets the desk set for his second year in a row for his birthday. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's like oof. Again, if I, I got a desk just... set one time, I'd be pissed. Yeah. Or Neil's Neil's dad at the very beginning s- says you can't do the annual. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think that's kind of the thing too, right? Is like, and it's not as much of a thing as as it was, but that kind of feeling of like your parents have this roadmap for what you're going to be and this is what you're going to be and there's that's it. Like, I don't really care if you don't want to do this thing. You're going to do it because it's going to get you into college and that's going to get you a better job and then you're going to be happy and then you're going to look back and thank me when you're doing the thing that you don't want to do for the rest of your life. Like, I don't know. I think that kind of is... Yeah. I, I mean, I don't know. I don't super relate to it but I also understand that it's kind of the a common trope in that and it's you know you do feel for the kids of like yeah these kids don't want to yeah they're at this fancy prep school but half of them don't really want to be here it's more like their mom and dad are making them so that they can kind of get them into an elite school so that mom and dad are going to be set for life once they become a doctor or a lawyer or a banker or whatever other i think a lot of these kids come from wealthy backgrounds already neil mentions at one point uh, that he that doesn't. he is not wealthy, right? Like that his family is not wealthy like everyone else's, and so that's part of the reason he feels guilty about pursuing the arts instead is because he feels like he has to get a well-paying, like high-class job for his parents, or he has to get a scholarship to Harvard. Yeah, yeah, so he his mom and dad don't have to struggle. No, I think they do. Like, yeah, obviously they're a bunch of elites but i think they try to like you know hey we're this study group and we're i think they they try i think they try to get them too like paying taxes (laughs) i think i think it's more so they try to give them like the standard student like oh they have to deal with homework they have to deal with teachers who are like you have to do 30 30 questions on this tonight before class tomorrow and then the next class you see is like in order to do well in trigonometry you have to be precise do all of this work by tomorrow it's like oh shit okay well the bigger thing for me i think getting into this which made it kind of tough throughout is that the movie's just a big cheese fest definitely it felt like we really on crack. talked about yeah like it's the whole movie is just so goddamn cheesy the entire time i'm not saying that makes it bad but i like personally for me i am not a fan of cheesy movies in general like i know people are and can get into them but i just i don't know uh i don't know i just the cheese fest is just super high off the charts in this movie which like i said it's not necessarily awful but for me it's a little bit um it's a little off-putting for me i agree when we were watching that i was kind of like this feels like rudy uh even has that kind of like hazy feel about it like oh we're this is it's so old but it like it's yeah it's just super cheesy in that sense like all of the events that happen but like leading up to like that 180 turn when the like uh suicide happens it just was like very like lighthearted and we're chasing girls and you know we're pulling pranks and making radios you know it's yeah, just fucking I mean, even making the... radios. <laughs> he did make something. Uh, yeah, they made, they were working on a high. I mean, they built system. a radio and they it uh, worked. They were on top of the roof and they had the music going. Yeah, it was pretty dope. Um, I don't know anybody that's making a radio at my school as a fucking prank. Yeah, that does feel <laughs> kind of weird. Getting taken to the police department. He's not building a radio. <laughs> um, I mean, now I think it is illegal, the... but. <laughs> Yeah, even the ending is uh, really cheesy. Where they all stand, oh, on, the standing on the desk. Yeah, and ultimately pointless. Oh, like, he st- like, the guy still gets fired. Nothing, like, he. Ba- they're basically just like, yeah, we, we basically signed your firing statement from this school, but we're going to stand on these desks to support He touched you. their lives, Cameron. You don't understand. His job was done. And they couldn't not sign a paper? Like, come on. Yeah, have some fucking backbone. So yeah, I just I I didn't care 
I didn't care so much for the ending, but I mean, like conceptually, I think it was good. Like, it's like, oh, like he knows that his students, he did have an impact on his students and all that, which is great. But yeah. Yeah. I think the big thing with this is the fact that like, keep in mind, it was a, it was a PG movie. I think its target audience was supposed to be younger, not like kid kids, but like more so probably like early teens and that. So like, yeah. yes, it's cheesy, but I kind of expect it. I don't know. Yeah, that's what got me through. I, I was like, okay, this is probably aimed at the kids age in the movie. Like these kind of really young high schoolers yeah i mean yeah but the suicide audience. scene is really dark or, for a kid like a high well, school you, you get the fucking lord of the rings makeover in it i felt more like <clears throat> i felt more like it was people who like kind of grew up at that time because they'd be like in their 30s and 40s at that point or whatever so at least because i think it took place in like what the th- late 50s so they're probably like 40s. Autumn of 1959. It is difficult to get behind a movie where the plot is like these 16, 17 year olds that are sneaking off to a cave to read dope ass poetry because their fucking professor they've known for a day told them that that was some dope shit to do. <laughs> so they just <laughs> went out to a cave and did it. Like, come on. Nobody's fucking doing that. Get some goddamn drugs and do some fucking drugs in your room or something. I mean, they were literally, like, smoking cigarettes and shit, like, doing shit, smoking pipes and that, like, shit they wouldn't be doing. Yeah, that's weeb shit, though. That's weeb shit. Get some fucking left-handed cigarettes in the chat. (laughs) (laughs) Left-handed Then read some damn poetry. (laughs) (laughs) Lord. Has anyone read Looking for Alaska? No. No. Ben's the only one who has seen this film. We'll give you three fresh ratings, Zach, Cam, and I, and Ben will give you a little nostalgia and an update based off our recent viewing. As I've said, this movie was fine. It was pretty cheesy. It definitely had enjoyable moments. Um, Robin Williams, I think, is really good. A lot of the actors that play the kids are also pretty good, I think. Um, But it was just ultimately very cheesy for me, I think. Uh, more so than I normally enjoy. And I do think it kind of... I dislike movies that are kind of philosophically up their own butts sometimes, and I think this kind of creeps into that category. Um, But it was entertaining, and for those reasons, I'm going to give this one a 6 out of 10. I I don't know. I I always lead, I feel like, with the the number when it's a fresh one for me. But uh, I'm going to leave it at a 5 out of 10. I think I really, I really didn't hate the movie. <laughs> I feel like that's not a great, it's not a great sell on it, but I, I enjoyed it. I think it, it does give you that warm and fuzzy, like nostalgia feel for, for parts. Very tropey. Like I said, there, it kind of feels like there's like a whole like vein of movies that have a similar concept of like the teacher that's going to, like a nonconformist teacher. And he's not going to teach you like the, the administration wants you and he's going to allow you to to like either become interested in school or or learn a, a different way uh he's going to reach the kids how do i reach these kids do um, i reach these kids but uh i think the movie kind of like cam said as well it 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 is like it's trying to be something a little bit more than than what it is it's just this because I do, I love the coming of age stories, um, which I think this part does well. But I think where it starts to falter is is trying to be a little bit more serious. I think the suicide is kind of un unwarranted in a sense. Like I feel like it just kind of like comes out of left field in the last twenty minutes, and it's like, okay, well now we're gonna fire the teacher, and yep, it's worth a viewing. Will I watch it again? Probably not. I think it's it's pretty pretty average movie to me. Similar. I'm glad I saw it. I've heard about this movie for a while. I'm a big Robin Williams fan, and this is probably one of his big movies that I just haven't seen yet or hadn't seen yet. I give it a six out of ten. 
for a lot of the reasons you guys said, it just feels like it's reaching to be something that it doesn't quite end up being. And I, I gotta think that when this movie came out in 1989, it was probably a little bit easier to relate to some preppy white kids from the 50s, but I'm just struggling on that today. The, the suicide, yeah, it just feels like it was added as a jab of like, hey, you have to feel bad for this kid. And, like, I get the whole dad thing, like, that fucking blows, but it just didn't, I don't know, this movie could be done better. You wouldn't get Robin Williams, obviously, which fucking blows, but this movie could be done, again, better, updated. Definitely watch this movie when I would have probably been, like, young and impressionable. Around the age of, in high school, where, like, around these kids' age, probably a little bit younger, but, yeah, I, I think, like... When you're younger, I think it definitely makes a different statement to it. Of especially all the the things of like you know, uh, the the first scene with Keating, where it's like not just namely like the seize the day stuff, but like look at all the pictures of the people who were here before you. You know what? We all end up worm food, so make the most of life. Like, make sure life's worth living, and I feel like that's kind of a big theme that, especially in terms of like education kids aren't really told make the most of what you have it's more focused again on standardized testing and this and that and you might have a little bit in your extracurricular type stuff but for the most part there's not a lot of stuff of like hey make sure you actually enjoy what you're doing or try to like enjoy what you're learning um find something you enjoy doing It was just more like, hey, this is how you do, this is how you solve for X. Uh, So with that in mind, uh, watching it as a kid, I definitely had it probably at like an eight, eight and a half. After the most recent rewatch, I'd give it like a six and a half or a seven. I'm kind of between the two. Probably leaning more towards the six and a half just because some of the things you kind of forget, like the whole, uh, like, Native Native American war paint thing just kind of not not great kind of cringy when you see it i still think this is a movie that for kids is teaches kind of a good message yeah i think the the suicide in terms of the story is one thing but again i think if you look at this movie in terms of delivering that message in terms of make sure you live a life that you want to live it kind of helps drive that nail in right because basically those those were Neil's options. Live the life his dad wants him to live or don't. And he chose the don't. Um, right. Especially as a kid, right? Like, yeah. I feel like it's very easy well, to and that's the thing, is like, not as, see another way out. Yeah. No. I mean, that's it. Well, because here's the thing. Say Neil just goes along with it. He hates what he, he hates what he does day in, day out. And then he finally goes to medical school becomes a doctor that he doesn't want to do and he does that day in day out do you think maybe at some point down the line he might have done the same thing anyways potentially just when he but i mean older, i think i think it's living a life he doesn't want to live like i don't know like i just think right. that kind of drives home the the thing of like you know seize the day but like yeah seize the day but make life what you want of it don't just right don't just kind of go about doing what you're expected to do thanks for listening hope you enjoyed don't forget to rate and subscribe check us out on instagram at cocktails and classics pod hit up the drizzly and casker links buy some surfside sips uh check out dead poet society on hulu as of recording next week we're doing the santa claus cam's never seen it shame him shame him on instagram and as always watch responsibly you you know we love saving the turts you know Cam hates fucking paper straws. Paper straws song. Song. Uh. <laughs> I will say that paper straw technology has improved since I last shat on paper straws. I have used a couple since I've been able to go out more recently due oh, to yeah. being vaccinated. And That's what they were uh, doing the whole time while we were inside. They were just inventing better paper straws. I have seen also not paper straws, but it seems like they're compostable plastic straws or something. Like You're talking about the ones that are made different. out of like agave or whatever 
I have no idea what the composition of these straws are. I'm just, <laughs> but they are different. I'm than not a straw expert. You, but you're the expert, Dylan. But I do know a good glass straw when I see one. You know. Yes, I will say for those for being at home and where you, you know, maybe you like straws in your fruity margaritas, or you like straws to mix with your, you know, old fashions or whatever. You know, having these straws around the home is really nice. No, not constantly like throwing things away, or you don't have to keep buying straws all the time. Like you just buy a couple, and then you're good. And if you want cocktail picks or muddlers, they have that too. It, there's many colors. He's getting into like designs. So like the pride flag, he puts it on like the side of the straw. He's got hearts. He's got critters. It's like you get a piece of art along with a straw. A little multi-use. Uh, oh yeah, he has critter straws, which have there's see a dolphin, a salamander. That salamander looks intricate. That is impressive. Grab some glass straws from Surfside Sips. Use promo code cocktails and classics spelled out for 20 percent off we get a little kickback from that and you get you get to save some money on some glass straws and they should last you a long time dishwasher safe they're pretty sturdy just don't uh drop them on the floor like me like a big idiot and you have to buy more 